So cool, a bit, a bit of info about myself. My name is Tu. I'm an integration engineer on the professional service organization in Stripe. I had a few questions just earlier about what is the role. So I work with Stripe, most strategic uh, users to help them to integrate with Stripe. As you know, Stripe is such an API-based sort of products. Um, and that sort of explained the motivations for the, uh, for the presentation that we will have today, which is the amazing power and what do you use them for? Right, so let's take a step back to the problem statement. How can a merchant predict and monitor and analyze the, their customer and the way they spend the money on? Um, every one of us, we all have a physical card that we use for a lot of things. These are not a real card, don't worry about it. Um, it has a 16 digit pan uh, that represents the card and it is unique to the card account. Um, so imagine, you, and obviously you can add these card into your digital wallets, such as Google Pay and Apple Pay. From the digital wallet, you can also you know, expand it to like adding it to your phone, adding it to your watch. I don't use the watch that can support that, but you can, you can, you can. And so imagine the scenario where you walk into a shop and buy a pair of shoes. You also want to deliver to your home instead of just bringing it home with you. Um, and you use the physical card to pay for that. Then in the same store, you go to get a coffee. And this time you pay with your watch. And finally, because the shoe is for somebody else, so you decide to add on like a gift wrapping service. And this time you just pull out your phone and you pay for it. Um, so the problem is here is that each of these devices, so your physical card, your Apple Watch, and your phone, uh, even though you're using the exact same card, they have different PAN number or the different 16 digit number that represent the card. And it's really hard for you to actually analyze and, and sort of aggregate that the purchase come from the same customer and the same card. Now, is it complicated? Yes. Can we make it more complicated? Yes. So imagine if you lose the card, then your, all your previous history goes with it as well you will be issued a new card by your bank, which has a completely new 16-digit uh, number. Then you add it again to your watch, you add it again to your phone, then you have two more 16-digit uh, number. In total, between your new card and your old card, you have six different 16-digit numbers that represent your card. So the complexity here comes into play, come into play where you as the merchant, stop thinking just about yourself as a customer, um, you as the merchant, you need to be able to aggregate the data of your customer. You need to be able to analyze the trends of purchasing. You need to be able to um, do target marketings based on the type of card they use because of the customer profiles, things like that. Obviously, you can always use their customer number that you have in, on file. You can also use their email address, their physical address, and their names, but they are not really reliable information. And how else can you identify a purchase by the card, right? So one of the things that we have in Stripe is called card fingerprinting. So obviously for PCI compli compliant reason, when you pay on Stripe, we tokenize the card number away. So you as a merchant, you will never see the 16 digit number of the card. What you see instead is something we call fingerprint. So the fingerprint is a bunch of alphanumeric, uh, is it a alphanumeric string which represent the card. And the same PAN number, the same card number on one account in Stripe has the same digits. Now, you would think that this is your problem solved, right? However, you would notice that the physical card, the Apple Watch, and the iPhone has different pan, a uh, different fingerprint. Do you know why? Because the pan that you have, the card number that these fingerprint represent are different. So the pan on your card is your real pan. The pan on your Apple Watch device and your iPhone are called D pan or device pan. And they are the card number that is was granted by either Google, Google or Apple, depending on which type of wallet you use and they are different, and therefore the fingerprint on Stripe will also be different. So again, the fingerprint, you can't really use it here. 
So from the last two slides only, we have six hand number, four different cat fingerprint, and you also have a lot of other data, customer name, customer email address, and customer physical address. There are so many points that you as the merchant, you as the data scientist within a merchant organizations, you will have to aggregate, uh, put together, do your own little custom queries. And um, it just so it, it just adds so much more complexity into analyzing your customer journey, your customer history with your merchant. Right. So do we have a solution for that? Yes, we do. And it and it is it starts with three letters. PAR, P-A-R. What does it stand for? Payment account reference. It is a fingerprint-like string that was rolled out in 2014 by e EMV Co., which represent a pan um, across, uh, is, which, represent, which represent the pan number with the issuer. How does it look like? It is a 29-digit string. And the first four digits in the string represent the CAT networks. So you can see here it's say 5001, that's MasterCard. I don't remember the top of my head what Visa looks like, but uh, but yeah, that's the that's the pair number for a master for a typical MasterCard token. Funny enough, my prop today is a MasterCard card. Um and why is it helpful? The 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 limitation that we have seen with the fingerprint is that between a physical card, your digital wallets, your different devices, they all have a different fingerprint on Stripe. However, all the card, all the all those different uh, payment instrument, physical card, Apple Pay, Google Pay, as long as it is the same card that is underlying, it, they will all have the same payment account reference. And when you make a payment on Stripe, we return this payment account reference so that you can store on your data warehouse so that you can perform analytics on it. What it does is that it gives you the insight into how your customer are spending their money and using which card. All right, so an example could be here. So as long as you use the same physical card, well, not physical card, like the same card in these three scenarios, then you can, you know, you can make completely different purchases and then you can pull your data into your data warehouse and you can do several of different things. So the first thing that comes to mind is obviously the customer trends. The second thing which you can do is you can analyze the, the you can target your marketing towards your customer base. So for example, um, if I share a card with my mom and um, she buys certain things on, on my account, for example, if, you know, I don't know what mothers can buy really these days, but uh, let's say multiple dresses, and um, and I and I use the same card. Then 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 you know the, the next time I see an ad, I probably see like you know female clothing or 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 like dresses as well. And um, you can certainly do something like that with your data. The other scenarios that we have seen is within BOPIS transactions. Does anyone know what BOPIS stands for? It's called buy online, pay in store. What I mean is that, for example, if I buy a pair of shoes online, for example, and then I come into store to collect it up, um, I will be asked to present the card that I use to, to complete my purchase online. For example, if I just don't bring my card that day, or if I bring a different device where I, you know, when I thought I had my card on it, then the pair of the physical card and the pair of my Google Pay, for example, will match. And then I will be able to collect my shoes and complete the transactions. Um, there is another scenario where it uses is actually transport up London. So for example, if you just tap your card on the way in and on the way out, you tap your phone, for example. Um, I, I, do, I do believe London City can match these one now, but, but yeah, that's another use case of, of using the pair so that you're not overcharged because they thought you present two different cards on the way in and the way out. I wish Dublin had that, but uh, we're not there yet. Um, is it the silver bullet? No. It solved your problem 90% of the time. The reason for that is that it only came out in 2014 and certain issuer has not caught up with it yet. Um, the return rate of pair 
uh, on average is 90%. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the top of my head, but um, I think the, for MasterCard is around the high 80s and for Visa is around the, the 90s. Uh, it's also different between card networks and issuer. So some issuer, especially traditional ones, they haven't they haven't started to return to uh, to merchant just yet, and in very rare rare case, we we observe two things. I haven't observed personally with my user, but but I was you know I was told that it could happen. That is that um, two different cards can have the same pair, and one card can have different pair. Uh, again, obviously I haven't observed it myself, but but it, it is there is the possibility for this to happen. And again, the last thing that I would like to call out, which is it is not a replacement for payment token. It is not a replacement for your PAN number. So what it means is that you cannot take a PAR and go charge the person cards. And the PAR, and, and, and for that reason, the PAR can be returned back in the APIs you know, as a string, whereas the real card token number will be tokenized and stored away in you know, a PCI compliant environment. Um, and that's it. That's everything you need to know about PAR, payment account reference. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.